Buenos Aires Zoo has four inhabitants that have come all the way from the island of Madagascar. They're four ringtail lemurs, known as sun worshippers, because they sunbathe every morning with their arms spread. They have distinctive black and white stripes on their tails, which are used in ritualistic fights between the males of the species. They consist of two couples and are the first of their kind to be found in Buenos Aires Zoo. The first couple are a male and female of one year and the second couple are two years old. Lemurs are herbivores. They feed on leaves, shoots and various fruits. These inhabitants of Buenos Aires Zoo will be given names by local children over the winter vacation. The word lima means ghost, a name which they were given because of the sounds they emit and because of their way of moving about. As a species, the lima is currently in danger. This is mainly due to the destruction of their natural habitat. Residents of Pariyaman Regency, one of the coconut growing areas in West Sumatra province, train pigtailed macaques, locally known as berics, to help pick coconuts during harvest time. They're easily distinguished by their short tail. The pigtailed macaque is of stocky build with creamy brown fur on the back, white underparts, and dark brown fur on the crown. Owner Sayaharuddin Sutan Mudo rents his trained baraks to residents during harvest time that usually runs every two months throughout the year. Training takes between two to three weeks for these monkeys to become adept at climbing trees, plucking the coconuts and throwing them on the ground for humans to collect. The clever monkeys are also trained to obey direction from their owners in choosing a ripe coconut. Saya Haruddin has been training and renting monkeys for over 20 years. He feeds his monkeys cooked rice, bananas and two eggs a day to keep them fit. Pigtailed macaque species range from eastern India to most of mainland Southeast Asia to Sumatra and Borneo. For once, it was not a boxing champion who stood in the limelight during official weighing, but a five-week-old servile at the Berlin Zoo. This is the youngest addition to the Serval family at Berlin's Friedensfeld Zoo. At her official weigh-in at only five weeks, Mia managed a proud 230 grams. Servals are found in most parts of Africa, except the desert regions to the north around the Sahara.
Although not apparent at this cute age, servals have exceptionally long legs, which allow them to swiftly move through high grass. As well as their very long legs, servals have big ears. They live in the steppes of Africa and chase small animals and sometimes birds. As you can see, it's impossible not to be taken in by Mia. Veterinarians on hand say to hold such a cat in your arm is still one of the highlights after years on the job. Although a medium-sized cat, the savale's prey tends to centre around smaller mammals such as hares, rodents and ground squirrels. It's their sophisticated ears that assist them in pinpointing small prey. It's impossible to imagine at this stage, but after a few more grams, Mia's on the best way to adapt the elegant and grown-up looks of her mother Mara. Conservationists have warned that the growing trade in chatouche wool is becoming an increasing threat to this endangered Tibetan antelope. Some 20,000 of the wild animals that live on China's Tibetan plateau are killed each year, either shot in herds by automatic weapons or caught in leg hole traps for their prized coats. Only an estimated 75,000 remain in the world Poachers gun down herds, skin them, and leave the carcasses. Shatush, which is Persian, means from nature and fit for a king. It has long been acknowledged as the king of wool. At this press conference in Beijing, the International Fund for Animal Welfare appealed for protection efforts to be stepped up to save the antelope. Since the 1980s, chateau shawls have become compulsory accessories of the rich and fashionable, despite a ban on its international trade since 1979. In India and America, the purchase and sale of the shawls is illegal while possession carries a maximum prison term of seven years in India. The wool is so fine, it measures just three quarters the width of Kashmir and one fifth that of human hair. Shatush is smuggled into Kashmir to be woven into shawls and scarves. The idea is to put a ban on shatush weaving in Jammu and Kashmir by developing alternative industries. Conservation groups and ordinary people are united in their opposition to the trade. It takes the coats of between three and five Tibetan antelopes for a single shawl. They can then command up to 5,000 US dollars. And demand is keen all over the world, especially in major fashion centers in France, Italy, and Britain. It would not be improper for one to ask, what is it? Or why does this animal look so bizarre? But this rather strange looking animal is an okapi, a relative of the giraffe, which is found only in the Democratic Republic of Congo. A wildlife reserve which sprawls for almost 14,000 square kilometers and named after the Okapi 
was established in the early 90s to try to protect these astonishing natural riches of the forest. With a population of about 30,000 animals, this is the last remaining natural habitat for the Okapis in the world. They live in large shady enclosures, fed by the local Bambuti pygmies. The pygmies trek daily to the nearby forests and collect a variety of leaves for the Okapis. These are then washed and hung on lines for the Okapis. And this exercise is repeated twice a day. When the Congo Wars began in 1996, the main problem for this park was poaching of elephants for their ivory and other smaller animals for their food. Now thousands of illegal miners have also put pressure on the ground, thus causing destruction to rivers and trees. Rebels offered to train and arm rangers to patrol the park. It is not only soldiers poaching for bushmeat and ivory who were killing animals. The coltan miners who flooded into the forest also needed to eat, and this added to the guards' problems. Deep into the Okapi Wildlife Reserve, a guard on patrol searches a derelict house for signs of recent habitation. He's in an old mining camp in the forest looking for people illegally digging for coltan. This camp is now empty, but previously more than 500 miners had worked here, panning frantically for coltan in the nearby forest streams. They cut down trees for houses, destroyed the streams, and tore off tree bark to sift the coltan from the water. These trees, without their bark, are now dying. Further on, the patrol finds a group of miners quietly at work. These are local peasant farmers, hoping for quick riches. Caught by the guards, their equipment is confiscated, and they are led off to a jail at the Wildlife Reserve headquarters. Another ranger shows off a small cache of weapons and recovered tusks, a sure sign they are slowly succeeding. And the Okapis have survived the turmoil in the chaotic Central African country, but whether they will survive long term remains to be seen. The forest appears to be largely untouched as far as the eye can see. But it's closer to the ground, not from the air, where the view is somewhat different. Growing numbers of migrants are settling along the road. For some in Roma, Bulgaria, street performance is a way of life and a source of income. While most entertainment involves musical performance, some still use animals as part of the show, especially bears. A popular form of entertainment across Europe in centuries past, dancing bears are found only in a few Eastern nations today. Bulgaria has just eight bears officially registered and still dancing along with a handful of illegally owned animals. One of Bulgaria's last dancing bears, Mitko, was taken from his Roma family and brought to the Dancing Bear Park in Belitsa. This park was established by the international animal rights organization Four Paws.
Doctors at the foundation say Mitko's pierced jaw made him one of the most heartbreaking cases they had come across. This dancing bear park is designed to readapt and shelter all the dancing bears in Bulgaria. It is co-financed by the foundation of Brigitte Bardot. Owners are paid to sell their bears to the park and the bears are then given a chance to return to their wild ways in a safe environment. This park has a visitor centre and 13 bears. Each bear's space is surrounded by two fences and includes a small swimming pool and trees. Once the chains are removed, they're free to roam around the park. Mitko is the 16th bear in Belitsa Park from a total of 25 in Bulgaria. One of the world's leading conservation groups say Asian rhinos are once again threatened by an upsurge in poaching and immediate action must be taken to preserve their lives in the wild. The report is called Wanted Alive, Asian Rhinos in the Wild and it comes from the conservation group World Wildlife Fund for Nature. The report estimates that at least 86 of the estimated 2,900 rhinos that live wild in Asia were killed by poachers in just four years, mainly in India and Nepal. The World Wildlife Fund say the animals are being shot, poisoned, speared, electrocuted or trapped in pits by poachers looking to harvest rhino horns. Other body parts of these rhinos are used in traditional Asian medicine which treats a wide range of illnesses. And there are other threats to the survival of the three species of Asian rhinos. The greater one-horned rhino, the Javan rhino, and the Sumatran rhino. Land speculators looking to establish plantations of palm oil, timber, coffee, rubber, cashew, and cocoa are threatening the habitat of these rhinos. The reduction in the rhino's natural habitat makes them an easier prey for their poachers. And they're also open to genetic threats such as inbreeding and natural disasters such as flooding. Among the three species, the Javan rhinos are the most in danger of becoming extinct. World Wildlife Fund estimates as few as eight living in Vietnam and 80 in Indonesia. Although there are roughly 200 Sumatran rhinos and around 2,500 one-horned rhinos left in the wild, natural catastrophes, disease and poaching still represent a threat to their lives. The World Wildlife Fund wants to combine cutting-edge conservation biology with trade monitoring, community development, public awareness campaigns and dialogue with traditional medicine practitioners.
This zoo in India's northern city of Uttar Pradesh has successfully helped alter behavioural patterns in chimpanzees. They claim to have induced considerable change in a pair of quarrelsome chimps since they installed mirrors in their enclosures. China, a seven-year-old female chimp, and Sunny, the five-year-old male, have never taken kindly to each other since they landed in the Lucknow Zoo. Their fighting often developed into bloody confrontations and the two had to be separated by zookeepers after prolonged efforts. Zoo directors observed that their quarrelsome tendencies could be a result of monotony in their enclosures, apart from the fact that the female was two years older than the male. In a trick devised to give the chimpanzees a sense of company, mirrors were installed outside their separate enclosures, and their behavioural patterns have begun changing, and this pair of chimps have now become more congenial to each other. Zoo authorities hope this mirror trick will help them prepare the chimpanzees for mating. These bottlenose dolphins are the world's first dolphins to be successfully inseminated artificially. Using ultrasound, scientists from Hong Kong's Polytechnic University the territory's Ocean Park Aquarium and SeaWorld in the United States were able to accurately predict ovulation in dolphins for the first time. Dolphins have very irregular ovulation cycles, making artificial insemination exceptionally difficult. And past attempts in the United States have failed. The Marine Park is very pleased with the dolphins. And while dolphins in general don't have problems reproducing, inbreeding can become a problem with dolphins in captivity, which produces genetically weaker offspring. Artificial insemination broadens the genetic pool and reduces the need to bring in dolphins from the wild. And this technology could also be used to help endangered dolphin species, such as pink dolphins or Chinese white dolphins which are facing extinction because of pollution and overfishing. Scientists in Hong Kong now want to experiment with artificial insemination using sperm that has been frozen. This could also be used to further enlarge the genetic pool. <laughs>